and Siegel, and that is what includes uh, their duties as, as, as your investment manager now to invest the funds and produce a return on that investment, hopefully. There's fees schedule that's associated with that within the agreement. There's exhibits to that agreement. Uh, delivery of reports and direct benefit custody agreement. Well, the delivery of reports is just a reporting form that needs to be filled out. Nothing, nothing vital there. The direct benefit custody agreement. Custody is going to be different than investment. The custody agreement is with Charles Schwab Trust, who's going to actually hold all of your funds. And then the fee schedule that's listed is the Schwab's fees. So they charge a percentage of the amount of based on the amount of money they're holding for you. The investment is <coughs> charging a separate fee. Uh, all of those are ready for uh, your approval, unless you have questions. There's not a lot legally that you do. These are all boilerplate forms. Charles Schwab's not going to negotiate their custody agreement with you. It's, it's, you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Do we need to do individual, or can we do a whole for the police pension plan, A through F? Uh, the trust agreement's in a resolution form, if I recall right. I think I would do that one separate. And then everything else you can uh, approve in one motion. Okay. Then a motion for police pension plan, plan trust agreement. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. And do I have a motion for the police pension plan discretionary investment delivery reports directed benefit custody fee schedule account set up for us? <laughs> motion? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Non uniform pension plan, is that what you're? Yeah, on the non-uniform side, we're still trying to ascertain the, the current plan effective date. <coughs> Some of that information is held by BBT, now true it's bank. And so some of the spaces within that form are still blank. So uh, I think we need to just work on that and then revisit approving that transfer at your next meeting. That transfer is a lot simpler uh, to do, they say, so they don't need as much time anyway. Okay. So table that for Yes. Yeah. MAA agreement, 2022. Seven. Have a motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Land development plans. Bloomington affiliates. Any updates? My understanding on that one was Terry was delivering something to the magistrate. Is that true? I mean, that, that's what I had as a note from the last meeting. I don't know if that occurred or not. Okay, so no update. It seemed like that was. Question report? So Wexford Court, through contacts with him, uh, the short story, he wanted to move a light fixture. That was fine. Other than that, there's been no action. He says the weather has been being pushed off or this, that, and the other. Um, Fence and all that stuff? No I don't. Joan, do you know if Terry issued, uh, from what I understood from Terry, he was going to issue a denial of the fence? Permit yeah, because it was for the fence, the, the wooden one. I yeah, I don't, I don't know if that progressed on the notice violation for that. Um, I, I think other than that light fixture saying he can move it, there's really been nothing. Um, he blamed it on weather, but I don't know where you want to go from there. Okay, and you're handling it from now, or is Terry still here handling it? Terry's going to handle the notice violation having to do with zoning, but the rest of it, I mean, I've been kind of running with it. And at this point, there was a letter sent by Eric on December 30th, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And really, other than discussions, there hasn't been any action. So what do we do with no action? He's in default. So the next step for the zoning ordinance violation is the filing of a complaint. He did not appeal that initial one. Uh, I guess he's applied for a permit and that was denied, so he can appeal that if he wanted to. But I think the next action for the zoning enforcement is for authorized Terry to file a complaint with the Manchester District Judge. Oh, we did that. No, we did that. You've done it for others. Yeah. For this one, it was a notice violation for the, the permit, or the fencing, I'm sorry. Yeah, he, but he, he, can't, he was on Zoom, wasn't he? Didn't he talk to us and we told him we're, we're, we're giving you enough time? And you held him in default. 
default notice of a development agreement gives him 30 days to cure. That was done December 30th to January 30th. He's not cured it. So the next step under your development agreement, if you want to do that, is to initiate a civil complaint in the court of common pleas with the equitable relief required in order compelling him to take action to bring his development up. Okay, so what do we do? Who do we contact? Do we need to go through Terry or do you just... We need to go through Terry. It's both. It would okay. be me to do a civil complaint for the breach of contract. It would be Terry to do the zoning ordinance violation with the Mass Shield District Court. Was Terry planning on coming? He just couldn't come? Or? Couldn't come, from what I understand. I mean, with some of this stuff going on, we almost got to have him come, come to the meeting so we can discuss some of this stuff. Well, I think, I think to the point of this one, if he's in violation of that, or if he's... But they, they've drug their feet on a lot of this stuff, too. I mean, how much stuff has Eric gotten together, too, in the past that they drug their feet on? You know, he's claiming whether I've been copied on some of the emails back and forth. He had a visit with his engineer scheduled for his structural engineer scheduled for some day last week or two weeks ago. Yeah, January 21st. Yeah, last year. Okay, so who, do we send those to Terry to tell him to move forward with the civil... I guess, who, Jones, can you... Do that or is that us or you? Make a motion to authorize Terry to file the complaint with the National District Court. Made it. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, do you want me to file a complaint in the Court of Common Pleas? That will take some time. There's a cost to that. Or do you want to wait two weeks and see if he's back in line? Do you still have his escrow? Mm -hmm. You do. And he's been requested to increase that escrow. Has he? No. Well, he was, that was that was an email back and forth between Eric and I. I haven't issued that letter to him. I will issue that letter saying we've reviewed that and it should be increased. You're expected to do so in 30 days. So let's wait for the court to come please to increase his escrow. Okay. XTL. Anything? Okay. Through conversations with all the people on their side, basically he is pursuing getting the entire escrow for the site improvements completed. And this kind of ties into both the land development and the site work. If that's all right. That is supposed to be done at the end of the week. Um, we requested to have a conference call once that's been done to be able to discuss the upcoming extension if needed, but also to figure out if he's actually going to do those improvements. Uh, more or less providing an update now, we should have more information by the March meeting. And I think at that point we kind of figure out where they are and if there are any action needs to be taken at that time. Morgantown Road Commercial, new submission. What is that? That's the one over here across from McDonald's that the Planning Commission reviewed. And I believe they're going to do some updates to that and bring it back to planning. Yeah. They just received comments from PennDOT. They have done that submission. They haven't done anything with the permitting, but it's basically we issued one review letter, had a Planning Commission meeting, and waited for the submission. <coughs> And those are plans for that? Yeah, you should should be there as a PDF under what is it, Business N5. When you open that up, if your system's not too slow, because it's a pretty big file. they gave me it was really hard to read for whatever reason it's a very large file and it takes a little bit of time to read okay so this is just information for us it's, we don't need to do anything no i mean we have hard copy plans in the office but i figured i'd do this format so that right at least now we have at least see it has our information yeah okay honeybrook road maintenance agreement draft is there anything updated on that, or something that you can just... Keith and I are supposed to talk to Eric sometime tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. And then stormwater driveway pipe items update. North Twin Valley Road. I think the short of it is I, I went around with Keith recently to start looking at the stormwater issues. I think trying to wrap, uh, wrap my head around the ones that are out there, there's quite a few. I think the ones on here are somewhat of the 
priority, but I think as we hit those, I'll add those to the engineer report and really kind of update as we get moving on. Okay. Um, so you want to hold off on all of these till the engineer's report, or? I don't know if there's any update to provide. Okay, 371 Swamp Road. <coughs> Which date till the 15th? 91 Broad Axe Pass. Shiloh, California. Okay. Settlers Trail Detention Pond follow up. It was just bringing Scott up to speed on that. I don't know that's just how it's right. Okay. Sunoco agreement update. I reached out to them. Uh, the agreement that was 